Greetings, space citizens. I'm CCP Manifest. I'm here to talk about New Eden, a universe that EVE Online, Dust514, and EVE Valkyrie inhabit. I'm also here to talk about talking about New Eden. Ah, what sorcery indeed. Am I about to outmeta the meta? Maybe. I realize talking about talking about something is a bit odd, but I'm pretty sure at some point you've all grown tired of reciting the same rehearsed lines to friends, family, colleagues, and anyone who finds out your dirty little gaming secret, that you spend some amount of your beloved personal time in a virtual universe. It's not an easy one to parse if you aren't an EVE player, and definitely tough if you don't play MMOs. Really, if you aren't a gamer, it might be nigh impossible. I'm here to try my best to help. I've personally found that talking about New Eden with my fleet mates over comms and with other players at conventions, fan fest, player gatherings, and Twitch chat and over social media has enriched my own experience as an EVE pilot and Dust Merc. I hope in the next little while I can give you more ammunition for all those conversations as well. Those familiar, often drunken chats with people who indulge in your same dirty little secret. You are a citizen of New Eden. Why else am I doing this talk? Well, I think that games can do amazing things for people. They broaden horizons. They create friendships. Games challenge you to think of the world in different ways. They help you discover yourself a little bit more. In some cases, by questioning your personal ethics, i.e., should I betray my corp and take all their stuff? In other cases, self-discovery by inspiration, having gained exposure to well-crafted narratives and amazing visual experiences. Suddenly you are the hero tackler grabbing that sniper that's been picking apart your fleet. Or, in another system on another day, you realize later that you've long since decloaked from your jump and you've been staring for who knows how long at the solar glare cresting that nearby planet because what you see on your monitor is just so beautiful. Like movies, literature, and other forms of entertainment that have existed for thousands of years, video games can inspire. Unlike so much of entertainment, though, games attain persistence in unique ways, ways that allow for a level of collaboration and interaction that wasn't really possible before computers and the internet. A bit about me professionally. I started my gaming industry journey at White Wolf Publishing, the Atlanta-based tabletop and LARPing company that merged with CCP in 2006. Before that, I attended the University in Durham, North Carolina to study history and English probably see how that influences the way I approach gaming, and New Eden in particular. I played a fair amount of video games in my day, probably well more than most, but realistically about equal to all of you, I'm assuming. For tabletop gaming, I really love White Wolf books in particular in the way they explore, fundamentally, the human condition through the lens of personal horror. Not too terribly unlike discovering the human condition while experiencing the personal horror of a gate camp in EVE. I believe tabletop gaming and cooperative storytelling rival the highest forms of art and entertainment, but that's a conversation for another time, so find me later at FanFest. At CCP, I'm the EVE Public Relations and Social Media Guy. But that's enough about me. Time to approach the gate at zero and jump through. At first glance, EVE is a sci-fi game about spaceships which are, as everyone knows, serious business a learning cliff towering above a sandbox with landmines and spreadsheets. At first glance, Dust is an immortal, mercenary game, a multiplayer first-person shooter with shifting tactical decisions and endless death. At first glance, Valkyrie is THE VR experience. You, and I mean it really feels like you, pilot a spaceship like the damn hero of your own damn movie. You blow other ships up. I'll be talking mostly about EVE during this session, but at a fundamental level, lots of the thoughts I'll be offering apply to the games in the EVE universe thanks to the single shard, multiplayer emphasis, death penalty, and CCP's design philosophy. In Icelandic culture, and also similarly in old school Dungeons & Dragons necromantic culture, it's important to know the name of a thing so you can really take control of it. Similarly, I think it helps to define New Eden for yourself while you're playing in it, so that you can better appreciate it. Hopefully one of these ideas will spark your imagination and you can suddenly realize what the hell you are doing here. New Eden is a manifested dream of human beings, an amalgamation of the creative will and skill of artists, programmers, designers, and writers. Hundreds of people over the years have contributed by creating this universe. 
their thoughts and hopes, their imagination of a dystopian future humanity. It's all been weaved together to create a game experience. It's shamanistic or alchemical. New Eden has become a coalesced supernatural spirit of sorts, something real that formed directly from emotion and from intellect. Billions of decisions forming a single avatar, a distillation of creativity that now exists as a separate entity. A poltergeist. An apparition. A shadow that has walked on its own for over a decade. But even at a more basic level, Eve is a series of electrons zipping around the world. Zeros and ones crammed into a very powerful server in a building in London. The dancing of atoms inside metal, quivering, overheating silicon. It is ephemeral electricity swirling together which has no real meaning, merely physics directed from some geographically distant history of programming through modern power and infrastructure. New Eden is energy that started out in the developers' brains as neurons twitching about inside their skulls. That energy was then translated through their nerves and flesh to their fingertips and through plastic keyboards into computers and across vast distances of massive cables along the ancient ocean floors to be stored, re-energized, and then sent back out to you. It is kinetic. And some fragment of that energy touched your brain through the computer screen, and you saddled that energy back onto your neurons, gave it a ride around your head, and sent it back out through your computer to someone else. And never diminishing heat passed from one body to the other. New Eden is a massive, elaborate version of rock, paper, scissors. Sure, skill will bring you most of the way by understanding your opponent, gathering subtle clues as to what they are likely to throw, and even trying to psych them out a little bit before the battle. EVE is designed, at its core, to be one of the more complex games of group RPS one could imagine. There are preferences, twists, turns, and split-second crushing defeats. It's the unknown quantity, the surprise rock tossed your way, that keeps the game interesting. It's the people that just keep throwing rock, regardless of the threat of paper. And of course, it's finally encountering someone willing to throw fire. All the preparation in the world cannot ready you for every eventuality. This is true in life and true in Eve. It's that kernel of uncertainty, similar to the rock-paper-scissors analogy, but on a larger, cooperative scale, that makes Eve one of the largest group gambling games ever devised. There is always an ante when you undock or you place a market order. Always something you're tempted to double down on. Will your super cap survive the battle when you bridge in? Will your ECM wing land their jams on the enemy lodgy? Can you really rely on the skill of your renowned hustler buddy to count cards and lead you to victory as tensions rise? At its heart, New Eden is communication, a constant discussion made of things said and unsaid amongst players. Local chat builds reputations, forums tear them down. Even how quickly you uncloak portrays your intentions. Your character bio is a billboard, your bounty a warning. Whether through Eve mail or kill mails or even which ship you decide to fly, you are always communicating something about your character and a bit about yourself. The depth of Eve isn't really in the amount of ore you mine or the isk per hour you gain. It's about how you portray yourself outwardly. Of course, communication is often led by turret diplomacy. Eve is an equation. It's a collection of players over time, of stacked modules, bonuses and profit margins, of comparing the pros and cons of an action in an exacting way. Inevitably, it is even more meta. You must put something into the game to get something out. New Eden isn't passive arithmetic. You have to create your side of the equal sign. At a larger scale, what all EVE players put into the game becomes the sum of the experience of EVE. The exponential compounding effects in EVE, from player actions to ISK itself, to the fond and frustrating memories of playing it, have become a massive bank vault in which players deposit their actions and, over time, can withdraw consequences and benefits accordingly. But isn't New Eden a place? A location maybe even separate from the servers? It has both geography and character, a sum of the structure of it, and those who inhabit it. History can provide some parallels, as New Eden has now reached a population limit that pushed it past even large social groups into something bigger. New Eden is a volcanic island, harsh, rugged, unforgiving, 
a middle finger to the vastness of the oceans, sort of geological in its pace at times, furiously erupting in others. Beautiful, terrifying, constantly terraforming itself with upheaval and violent shifts. Those that live in New Eden cling to any shred of advantage they can. They are fiercely independent, but know the strength of numbers. There are jagged rocks everywhere. Everything is a bit more primal. New Eden is Samarkand, a major hub on the ancient Silk Road. Eve is a crossroads of civilizations. Merchants, looters, and thieves from the world over ply their trade in its boundaries. Goods and ideas are exchanged. Adventures begin here. Local customs dumped into it from the world over, and a new city is created. An internet crossroads with innumerable opportunity, danger, and personalities. Commerce rules the day in Eve, just as it did way back then. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life, living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation, unless it was quite necessary. I want to live deep and suck all the marrow out of life, to live so sturdily and spartan-like as to put a rout to all that was not life, to cut a broad swath and shave close, to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms, and, if it proved to be mean, why then to get the whole and genuine meanness of it, and publish its meanness to the world, or, if it were sublime, to know it by experience, and to be able to give a true account of it in my next excursion. At some point we all come to Eve to live our gaming lives as deliberately as possible, or realize after we start that we have just been mirroring Thoreau's experiment. Eve offers something more, something different than the typical game. Rawness, a counterintuitive simplicity. Death, judging yourself. What type of person am I? How should I engage my fellow pilot? What are my responsibilities to my courtmates? Can I build an empire with my will? Few places in history are as close to Eve as the great 19th century city. Eve is overrun with Oliver Twists, skipping between the proud gates of industrialists, crystal palaces, neighboring deplorable slums, migrants and imperial dreams, proper gents dressed in finery, colliding with frayed harlots willing to do anything for a few pence and behind it all a fascination with loss and death. In London it manifested itself in mourning rituals. In New Eden we gathered to discuss killboards. Danger lurks in the alleys and markets in stark contrast with the alabaster beauty around it. New Eden is Renaissance Italy, complete with warring states and shifting allegiances, and competing ideologies knitting a strong fabric of intrigue and commerce. A prince is well received in the piazza one day, and at the business end of a rapier the next night. Blood spilled on marble, a land rougher in reality than the art it produces would suggest. A story of brothers and sisters and schisms, debt and revenge. Powerful leaders and a star map bathed in a patchwork of different colors. New Eden is a Parisian salon. While many do spend time plotting military action, so many of those who play Eve primarily treat it as a social experience. They fleet up and chat while awaiting orders, thoroughly debating ship-fitting doctrines and political stances, talking philosophy in hushed or boisterous terms over drinks, scheming mixed with high ideals. New Eden has become a massive forum for exchanging ideas, poetic in a way. Hosts inspire with humor and fraternity, Tastes refined throughout the night, and noobs are educated by the mere presence of savvy, eloquent veterans. There ain't many laws this side of the regional gate in 0, .0 town. Next to none in wormholes, neither. Steal a man's freighter, and he'll likely pay a handsome fee to an unscrupulous dog for you to be strung up at undock. Pot all opened up, face scrunched up, frozen in space. Be careful when you head west, young man. Make your fortune. Stake your claim. Find the gold in them there asteroid belts. Beware Sancha as a matter of principle. They'll skin your head and reprogram you real fast. But beware of that shifty-eyed pilot sitting on the other end of the saloon. 
think he saw you fiddle with the coins in your pocket. Make no mistake, it's the players you should be worrying about. Those just as hungry as you for the isk will do damn near anything once your back is turned. Out in this wilderness, there's a hundred dangers waiting to kill you. Scorpions, rattlesnakes, the odd angry Kaldaran badger. Life on the frontier could be your salvation, or it could be your downfall. <clears throat> At the same time, New Eden isn't necessarily a place in the truest sense. It's a complex impersonation of one. It's a translation of real life into a computer experience. It's something we, as developers of the universe, had pursued for years. It's old-school aspirational to have a digital existence mimic real life to the least possible discernible degree. A 1980s dream so vivid, it replaces reality. EVE is most often described as an economic simulation, where the unshackled behavior of hundreds of thousands of people with their own motivations are colliding in a relatively free market, most with an unmistakable self-interest rooted deep in their self-consciousness. That desire for profit to fuel their leisure and pursuits is overwhelming, a potent drug that guides all actions of those under its sway. We've seen time and time again that EVE can teach us about real-world economics, it proves theories long held by economic schools of thought. It validates them due to its unique position of containing a population of a certain size with near-complete, real-time data on the behavior of its inhabitants. If you want to learn about humanity, just study New Eden to test your assumptions. Gather enough people together at a large enough scale and it will become a fully functional political engine. Self-aware opinions diverge, charismatic leaders emerge. Sheep flock towards ideologies and promises. A philosophy that's connected to a finite situation and time takes root, and the people that live in that space start to take sides. Play styles dictate allegiances. Concern for societal health surfaces in the form of protests. A populace becomes self-aware. New Eden's Council of Stellar Management and Planetary Management are the natural evolutionist political simulation with a society large enough, it makes sense that democracy would arise to champion itself. There is a maker and or ruling authority, CCP, and there is a larger society of players that finds a voice within a representative cadre of brave souls. The depth of EVE politics is as complex as the political machinery of a large metropolitan city or small country. Individual decisions influence fleet decisions, which influence the evolution of the corporation, which influences alliances, and then entire metagames. And of course, the meta movers and shakers do the reverse, politicking the universe to their will. There is a history behind Eve, and it often shifts with the issues of the day. With thousands of players battling together in real time, skirmishes in New Eden rival many modern real-world conflicts in terms of size. Since an increasingly larger portion of modern warfare is done without men on the front line, and with as little risk as possible, it can be almost as detached as a computer game, especially when you consider drone technology. Not to diminish the brutality of warfare, but there is something to be said for the logistical comparison between New Eden and non-New Eden, where coordination in near real time is important, and the weeks and even months of preparation leading up to the conflict are rewarded in victory. There are hierarchical communication channels and propaganda, supply chain logistics and proven military tactics, espionage and counter-espionage, diplomacy, all are part of New Eden. New Eden answers the question, what will happen when human nature encounters a set of nearly unbound rules? Will it closely mimic the real world? Will the good or the bad triumph? How will it grow and evolve over time? New Eden has shown incredible parallels to real world societies as its vast assemblage of people have grown and allowed gestation of entire industries. At one population level, banks arise. At another, artists begin to offer their services to patricians. Even more pile in and a whole musical culture comes alive. Complexity saturates itself over time. Specialization and differentiation create even more seeds. Eve has shown time and time again that human nature will reign supreme that the varied motivations that manage to anchor themselves in the real world also manifest themselves in the virtual, not just self-preservation or praise for the almighty isk, 
but also incredible acts of nurturing warmth. It sounds sappy, but it's true. Eve provides you with a unique opportunity to forge a digital character of yourself, to remold your gaming life into something completely different. I think you'll all agree this is a bit more than the normal character in another game, which, while you may grow a strong attachment to them, isn't quite as much you as the character in the Eve universe. Because of the single shard and because of the tight social bonds, your reputation becomes even more important. For instance, these avatars mean something more to almost everyone listening to this than another pair might from a different game. It's why we made the character creator the way we did, to give even more weight to reputations. So many humans seek opportunities to reinvent themselves in our real universe, the one with ultimate consequences. They desperately try to divorce themselves from previous decisions. New Eden provides that. You can become something new once you move here. No one knows your past, and no one is really in charge of your future except you. It's an avatar simulator in the strictest sense of the word. Your incarnation. Your embodiment. An essential distillation of you. For years, CCP Torfifrons, God blessed his dark and corrupt soul, led the charge to have Eve become the ultimate sci-fi simulator. Everything you can imagine doing in a sci-fi world should be at your fingertips. We all agreed. An incredibly noble goal. Lofty, Viking aspirations. CCP had the right aim, but I'd argue that what we didn't realize was that we had already achieved it. New Eden is science fiction. It's got warping spaceships, spinning asteroids, moons circling planets, cloning, tachyon beams, and gorgeous nebulae. But playing Eve really is science fiction. You have become a part of a living, different universe. You act as a twisting cog in the machine of a real experience. Think about it. Millions of people the world over have spent over 10 years contributing to the same virtual universe through their computers, fighting massive conflicts with long-lasting effects. These battles all happened. This is the game science fiction warned us about. This intrigue, the communication, the espionage, the political wrangling, the conversations and all such happened in this mysterious ether, this massive, coordinated experience is a plot full of science fiction elements. In the end, there's not actually much simulated about it. It is real science fiction, real conflict, real politics, and real economics in a real society filled with real people. From the beauty of the nebulae, to the haunting soundtrack, to the stirring performances given every day over voice chat, New Eden is full of art, and therefore, at a greater level, it is art. It leaves in its wake player-made poetry, music, video, fiction, and a true oral tradition. It is built by concept artists and writers, by dreamers and designers that infuse it with meaning and purpose. And it has become art in and of itself, the Eve Monument, being the latest example, a stirring testament to the ability of this virtual universe to intrigue and evoke. As an Eve player, I tell you honestly that I believe the memories I've gained while playing Eve deserve to be kept and honored. I know that many of you feel the same way. My Eve memories are certainly more helpful and generative than some I've experienced in my personal life. There can be true friends here, powerful emotions. As a student of history, it seems only fitting that a society of millions of contributing people, even if it's only risen in the past 10 years, deserves to be remembered forever. New Eden has become art in other ways, equally appropriate to the scale of the creative endeavor. Three science fiction novels, a graphic novel based on actual events, beautiful music, and so much more. Eve is monumental. I think I'm being a bit too literal here, so let's leap out into the metaphorical once more. New Eden is a canvas. At first it seems vast, clean, and untouched. It's almost baffling to try to choose how to decorate it. Do I pick up a pencil and doodle as an exploration for it? Do I toss a huge bucket of paint right on it, smart bombing that canvas in one terrible explosion? Do I lightly draw a grid on the canvas first and meticulously build an industrial empire, measuring every paint stroke before committing it to permanence? Or do I furiously mark it up with the thickest marker I can find, crashing and burning within seconds of engaging? Then, 
You come to see that the canvas is already full of slowly fading marks left by others. You peel away the corners to find layers painted by others underneath the surface. Or, even truer, you find that the canvas is destined to rest aside others in a truly massive artistic tableau that holds the individual works of hundreds of thousands of artists doing their own thing. New Eden is literature. It's a self-created epic. I'm not suggesting that every player blows up a titan, saves their fleet from certain destruction by their heroic actions, and rescues the damsel in distress to retire to a cozy life in Dodixie. Yet the very act of playing does create your own digital odyssey, not just in your actual experience jumping between systems, blowing up ships and hauling cargo holds full of stuff. Your odyssey is written in the wake of those experiences. Moments of conflict are automatically recorded by Killmans. Your dialogue with others logged in chat and even market interactions tell a complex tale when translated. The digital you, a spaceship captain traversing the universe, does have a story, and that story is always being written into history by the code itself. Perhaps someday, armed with the API, some very complex algorithms and server logs, which do exist, Historians of New Eden will be able to tell what kind of you that you are, what adventures you had, and what you valued, and so forth. Certainly more information is automatically recorded of your actions in EVE than by the average person only 40 years ago on Earth. New Eden is science, not the type weaved by the wizards of computer science, nor simply the zeros and ones and electrons that I described earlier. Metcalfe's law states that the value of a telecommunications network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users to the system. This is true of the internet, and it's particularly true in a single shard sandbox. Each and every player that's added to the mix brings exponentially larger benefit to all other participants. It's secretly one of the main reasons why I celebrate each new player to EVE. Sure, each subscription helps boost my salary by a minuscule amount, but really, I celebrate each new because, as an EVE player, I've seen what a singular person can do for my game. A novice FC builds a rep, and I fly with them time and time again until it becomes the vanguard of a fleet routing an enemy alliance. Someone with a talented Photoshop hand makes an EVE image that I can't stop laughing at. Another person blogs a new metaphor to put into a presentation like this. Each one of these players could be entering the universe that I play in, each brimming with possibility and potentially affecting my game and my enjoyment. I'll take the good with the bad because even the bad can be interesting. Could a new player become a scourge on my current trade route? I could draw months of content from them. An often used metaphor, chaos theory thrives in EVE. Use boundaryless, persistent sandbox means that one lone wolf could turn the tide of sovereignty systems months in the future. Your decisions are never truly just for yourself. They are not limited to your hull, or your station, or even your constellation. Your decisions are for any other player that feels the air pushed off your wings, even in the slightest way. When you look up at the night sky, you are seeing the past reflections of distant actions reaching you over the course of time, the pale touch of light from distant stars that may have already perished. New Eden is full of starlight, the haunting losses in your character bio, the empty passes and wormholes once filled with dreams, the whispers of past alliances fallen to the wayside, old videos from years past and ambitions crushed. Yet this encounter with starlight shouldn't be terrifying. These remnants of past brightness bring beauty to your gaze, cement you in the universe as a participant lucky enough to behold them. A connection is made between you and the distant stars before you in these moments, with New Eden itself. New Eden is a society, there is no doubting that. It's inherent in any collection of people and, as described before, the nearly unbound nature of the sandbox means all of the traditional social forces come into play. It's a society because it exists over time. People come and go, but the beating heart still lives on. And that heart is a culture. The same songs, language, videos, and historical treasures that make it a society evolve with the participants. I think you can feel it. Eve creates tribes within its bounds, but there's also sort of a larger mega-tribe. 
There's a common bond, whether that's one created by the analogous experiences of those who have Eve as their dirty little gaming secret, or whether it's because of a greater hope we share for what science fiction or online gaming could become. Maybe it's a mix. But whatever mix it is, the culture is there. Not homogeneous, thankfully, but there. Often, when asked, what games do you play, people say, I'm an Eve player. It's a badge, a nationality, self-identification. Sociologists might point to the Ozymandian nature of New Eden, the vicious cycle of harvesting, creation, and destruction built into the multiplayer game harkens back to one of my favorite poems by Shelley. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty and despair. Nothing beside them remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. New Eden is sand falling through your fingers. The reminder that the only permanence is impermanence. However mighty the empire, it will fall to the eventual progression of time. Power is ephemeral, and at some point the great cycles of the universe will claim you too, even if just for a moment. It's an existential reminder. The opening bits of the Eve design document read, Death is a serious matter, after all. I would be remiss not to mention this often used phrase when describing a group of people from all over the world suddenly finding themselves together. Countless cultures bring limitless motivations to the players on the other side of the gate from you. A real world distillation of a new internet culture. Ellis Island 2.0. New Eden is a dark omen for humanity. I'm sure there are many who would have played who agreed with me having been on the receiving end of those seeking to sup from the goblet of delicious tears. Yet the predatory playstyle many incorrectly think consumes all Eve players isn't really what I'm talking about. New Eden's lore, a dystopian future, could very well presage our own. Humans, driven by fear, profit, and greed, will lead the eventual schism of humanity and bring about a terrible epic to end existence as we know it. Violence begets violence until all is consumed and we are plunged into the abyss. Many think that human nature will take us to this place, and the narrative of New Eden could very well point to it. You should take a more careful look at New Eden, though, and how players interact. I believe amidst this dystopian future, there is a distinct message of hope. Playing Eve showed me that people can come to trust those they don't really know when stakes are high, The power of any good fleet depends on it. There is also a tremendous amount of humor in Eve, and we can all agree that true friendships are always supported by humor. It breeds goodwill and heals terrible wounds. The message I take from New Eden and try to apply to the future is that, when people band together, they can accomplish so much more than they can while struggling, trapped in a myth that anyone can really win by flying solo. Eve is a testament to the fact that interaction the collective power of friendship and cooperation is indeed possible and it can be awe-inspiring. I've talked a lot about what Eve is and how one might relate to New Eden, but how about a couple things to describe the experience of playing it? One of the first things that I wrote down for this talk was that playing Eve was like Russian roulette. Not because you were fighting Russians on occasion, of course. A piece of sage advice for any pilot is to assume you're going to lose your ship the moment you undock it. This truism paralyzes some people, but many derive immense pleasure from knowing that, inevitably, the last chamber you stare down will have a bullet in it. It's a bit morbid to think of it that way, I grant you, and of course the stakes are not really the ultimate stakes of possible death. But the experience of playing Eve is all about adding as many empty chambers to the revolver as you can, for as long as you can, through learning, practice, seeking advice, creating tactical advantage, or fleeing before the hammer drops. 
dodging the Sword of Damocles for as long as possible. You are decreasing your own risk as close to zero as you can to show your mastery over the game and its other players, although there's always that one kernel of doubt that this will be the jump, this one jump that will send you back to the Clone Bay. Eve isn't so much about the act of building empires or tearing them down as it is about the fraternity you have with those you fly with. It's not about bending the solar systems to your will or harvesting them for profit. It's about the benefits of gathering together with other pilots and mercs. Your squad, corporation, alliance, and coalition provide warmth, brotherhood shared and often unspoken. You gather around them to sing songs over comms, tall tales and legends pack, pass back and forth freely. Old stories and witty banter find purchase over the flames. Work all day in the wilderness and gather in the home station. The campfire punctuates the night and gives you a sanctum amidst the darkness. I hope that at least a handful of these metaphors have given you some food for thought about what it is you are doing in New Eden. I want to leave you with a few last thoughts. New Eden is the world's largest cooperative storytelling effort. It's a single volume to which millions of people contribute and have contributed in real time, over time, for 10 years straight. It's a work of epic art, of literature and of unity. It's terrifying in its complexity, ominous in its amorality, and wondrous at the heart of it all. New Eden is a Rorschach test. I believe how you approach the Eve universe and how you talk about it is very telling as to who you are. Do you view it as a personal challenge, an opportunity, a serious game, spreadsheets in space? Do you play it for leisure, to hang out with that crazy British guy who is always four pints deep, and the expert Russian scout up way past his bedtime, the gnarly California kid who has all the best gifs at the ready to celebrate victory or defeat? Do you play it because you like to learn, or you like to feel a sense that something is actually at stake, danger you miss in your everyday life? New Eden is an ethical playground, a morality tool to help determine how you see yourself. You probably can do more in the game of a questionable nature than you would dare do in real life. What do you learn about yourself when you decide to warp out after being targeted for Alpha? Are you a coward? Are you tempted to take all you can from a defenseless foe? Are you a bully? In New Eden, players can explore who they are without damaging themselves as much psychologically or even physically as if they decided to take the same risks in the real world. Betraying your friends in Eve comes with a lesser social prize than it would in real life. People are much more careful with things their colleagues spent months to help build in real life. Less so with the Titan. It is how you wrestle with your options that defines the Eve universe for you and, really, defines you as well. Simply, New Eden is Eden. It's a choice of taking from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You can choose to bring sin into the world. Do you? Do you regret it? Do you decide to bring good into the world? Do you regret that? Do you aspire to be the one making the rules of your own paradise? In the end, New Eden just is. Real? I think so. To bring it back to the beginning, perhaps New Eden is a learning cliff. On one hand, it is something you inevitably have to climb before you can start to appreciate the depth of the universe. The perspective it can bring isn't as obvious at first. You know, I've always found the perspective of this graphic to be strange, so let me talk about it in a different way, the way that I see it. To me, New Eden is a learning cliff where you start at the top and decide to leap off. There is so much freedom in the space just beyond solid ground. That's why I play. Everything in life worth doing is complicated, daunting, and ultimately more rewarding. Children, friendships, family, work, hobbies, choices, triumphs, risks, just living. All of it is infinitely complicated. It's understanding that fact and then trusting that if you just are, like New Eden is, you will derive some happiness by focusing on experiencing it as opposed to letting fear of the jagged rocks below overwhelm you. It's why I leapt off the learning cliff and into the solar systems beyond, and why I will keep doing so in New Eden for as long as I can. 
Thanks for taking the time to listen to my thoughts on these games we share, for being a part of my universe and allowing me to be a part of yours. 07, fly safe.